Amen. Amen. I want to speak on a subject that I believe we have spoken about in this house for a long time. I mean, but this morning there is a particular emphasis we want to draw and then we pray. Amen. There's a particular emphasis we want to come across this morning and then we pray. Hallelujah. 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 I want to hear your responses to know we are all on the same page. Hallelujah. The message title is The Law of Speaking. You know, last week we had the power of confession, right? And throughout this week, as we were on the morning prayer call, we were looking at how Zachariah's word betrayed him. I want to see that everybody is paying attention that we continue. Are we together? Yeah. On the morning prayer this week, we saw Zechariah. How many of us remember? In fact, how many of you pay attention when we come online? That's a good question to ask. Zechariah was a high priest, and we discovered that he is a priest, but we saw he did not have faith. How did we know he didn't have faith? How, how did we know he did not believe? How, did we, how do we know? He spoke it, exactly. So the law of speaking. Hmm. Now, before we go into the scriptures, I want to lay this emphasis clearly on this, um, this, this, in this service. We can know where your life is going by what you are saying. So when I listen to you for five minutes, I can tell where you'll be in five years. <laughs> Hallelujah. So everyone that is in this room, your life now is as a result of what you said five years ago, ten years ago. And where your life will be in the next five to ten years is also dependent on what you are saying now. Now in the spirit, there is a law. It is called the law of speaking. Hallelujah. Are you hearing me, church? The law of speaking. So we want to lay an emphasis this morning. It's a message some of you say, oh, pastor, I know it. But just bear with me. Let's go together in this word. Amen? The law of speaking. The law of speaking. It means there must be an action of some words coming out of your mouth. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So every one of us in this room, where we are is largely a reflection of what you have been saying. Not what you are doing only. Give me the first scripture. The first scripture and then we will take it from there. Matthew 12 verses 36 and 37. And this morning I want all of us to read the scripture together. Like just pay attention, follow. But I say unto you, can you see it? That every idle word, so in the spirit, they don't have room for idleness. You can't say this one, I said I was joking. Especially if it has to do with matters of destiny. <laughs> this is why I'm very careful the things I say. But this is Jesus' words. If you have your, if the Bible is yours, you will see that it's written in red. So Jesus is saying to them, Jesus is what saying, he is speaking to them. The first time words were introduced to us in the book of Genesis, words were introduced to us to see the creative ability of God. We thought God was going to create with his hands, he used his mouth to create. Are you seeing what I'm seeing? Words were introduced to us in Genesis chapter 1. We said God created the heavens and the earth. How? By speaking. So our life is depend 90%, 95% of your life is dependent on what you are saying or what you are not saying. Are you hearing me? But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak. They shall give account thereof. Where? If you don't have anything to say, keep quiet. 
you are better off than speaking something that you become accountable for in, on the day of judgment. That's why I told you there are conversations when they bring it up. I tell the people I have no opinion on this matter. <laughs> Let me keep my, my atmosphere and march forward. It's wisdom to know what issues you even put your mouth in and which ones to avoid. It's not everything you talk about. Every idle word. See, a idle word can mean something you have no idea about, but yet you want to contribute to. Everything you are going to be saying is idle. Because it will not amount to anything, but at the same time, you will not go scot-free. <laughs> Hallelujah. Amen. The law of speaking. Verse 37. For by somebody's words... For by your own words, thou shalt be what? And by thy words, thou shalt be what? Also what? So condemnation is not coming from God in the first instance. It's coming from your own words, what you are saying. What you are saying. Now, listen church. My commission, part of my commission as an apostle of the gospel... You see, every man of God, God calls. He gives them a specific assignment to do in the body of Christ. Amen. Our first responsibility is to remain committed to that assignment. Hallelujah. Now, in that assignment, by the apostolic grace, I have received a commission to teach. Not just teach, but to teach the people the nature, the, the, the things of the kingdom, so that they will develop and grow in maturity. Hallelujah. See, when we have children, when they start school, they don't start teaching them all the big things. They start teaching them words, how to combine words. When people become believers, they, we should take them to new convert class and start teaching them the language of the kingdom, how to speak. One of them is faith. This is why we started the school of ministry. It's not, school of ministry is, is a way to like go back and then start again to be sure the foundation is right hallelujah because people must be taught even how to speak don't they teach our children how to speak in school they teach them how to combine letters this is a this is b this is c and they start teaching them words by combining the letters it means when you become a christian there should be a conscious agenda to teach you how to speak in the kingdom because by your words you'll be justified by your words, you'll be condemned. Many believers have not been consciously taught how to speak in the kingdom. So they just speak anything. And what, it's not, you see, we give too much credit to the devil. The devil is only as powerful as what you are saying. Or what you are not saying. Hallelujah. This is why I told you the other day, when you say, I have no money. You have given information to the devil because he doesn't know that your bank account is empty. Oh. <laughs> he doesn't know it. So what you are saying is, you say, oh, okay, so since he has no money, let's ensure that there will be no money. I'll give you partner with me. For by your words, you'll be justified or condemned. So what do you say? We are trusting God that this money will be made available. That's it. Amen. Are we together? I said that, I said to the planning committee of the anniversary, nobody should come and tell me, Pastor, we have no money. <laughs> that is a statement of faithlessness. What we say is, how can this be done? We are trusting the Lord to make a way. Provision is made available. See, that word provision, have you looked at it well? Pro and vision. It means when God gives a vision, he brings the things that we need. So, pro comes before the vision. Can you see it? Oh, you are not seeing the thing. So if you can see the vision which is after the pro, then it means there is the resources to be used for that particular thing. <laughs> pro vision. <laughs> so anywhere there is a vision, there are resources to champion the vision. That is why we have no collapsed as a church. God is taking care of us. Oh, if you are not loving Jesus this morning. Are you with me? Yes. The law of speaking. After this, some of these sessions that we are doing, 
when you start speaking in a certain way some people will leave your 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 atmosphere because they cannot stand what you are saying now i'm not teaching this. it's not pride it is knowing who you are and how to speak so when you start declaring among your people your friends i cannot be sick they will look at you and say you are trying to be proud listen don't be deceived it's not every pastor that has faith it's not everyone who has microphone that has faith we saw that Zechariah was ministering before the temple in the temple was he not the angel came we shall read it very soon and gave him word from heaven yet he doubted and he was a priest <laughs> so it's every pastor that has faith every place is not your place that's what I'm saying because the way you are going to be built and be grounded in the word is dependent on what you are also hearing so you can speak if you are hearing the wrong thing you are not going anywhere you are going to be speaking the wrong things hallelujah if i come to stand here and i'm teaching us that you know what um if you are going through a challenge it is well with you it's going to be well i'm only making you comfortable in your uncomfortable state but if i'm able to teach you the right things to say even in a situation of discomfort I have done 95 percent of the job hallelujah <laughs> there is a tribe in ghana they are they are the people laugh at them i won't mention their name but the the people are so bold in their speech in their speaking that when you are fighting them and you even put them on the ground and you are sitting on them they will tell you when i get up i'll finish you <laughs> they they believe in the, that ability so they never say even when they are down they have been defeated they will tell you if i get up i'll finish you so that's the, the mentality don't say that you are even being defeated because the man of the spirit does not lose anything we, we are not a, a people that can be defeated hallelujah for by thy words thou shalt be justified not another person's words so don't hide under the words of somebody and then make us think that oh it is well it's because you, you will have to speak eventually amen so this is a very good um, foundational scripture let's go to the next one thank you lord are you following up to this point have we lost anybody so we've come back to zacharias again as of this time because of time we cut out a lot of the verses so we just jump to luke 1 the verse number 18. the bible said as of this time zacharias had seen the angel there had been a communication and then Zacharias said unto the angel the angel said to him your prayer has been answered and that your request for a child God sent me to bring you the, the response too many believers now listen too many believers when the time of their breakthrough is near they are the same people that postpone their breakthrough because when the word that is to bring the breakthrough comes they say they still say i i don't think this one can happen pastor are you are you sure <laughs> so what is the point in praying one year for something and the word of the lord comes and says listen every time something is going to manifest there must be a word you must receive in your spirit and begin to confess it for the manifestation are you hearing me the law of speaking Zacharias is a priest standing in the temple imagine just, just you see sometimes when you read the Bible let's bring it to our situation imagine as a pastor I'm preaching here and then I'm declaring that there is going to be a revival in Perth in Australia and an angel comes and says that that prayer has been heard get ready and I ask the angel how am I going to be sure that this is true? It means all the prayer we pray, we didn't believe it. That's, that's what happened to Zacharias. The word came to him and said, you are going to have a child. And the priest, I'm emphasizing the priest because I want you to know that not everyone that calls themselves with big titles have faith. So if you are looking for somebody to uh, um, to copy in terms of faith look at Jesus <laughs> hallelujah it, 
it is possible even sometimes that some of the, the congregants have more faith than the pastor. I'm telling you. Sometimes. Because if you read the account in this, in this scripture, the Bible said all the people were outside. They were praying. Their prayer was Zacharias will receive a word for us. The people had faith that they will receive something out of the encounter. Yet the man that stood there didn't have faith. The people were outside praying. God forbid it won't happen in this church. That all these people that are coming with something in them, faith, and they, they, it, turn out, it turns out to be the pastor doesn't have faith. What a disappointment. <laughs> Everything we are going to do in this house, we are going to do it by what? It starts by speaking. The law of what? Speaking. You don't speak based on where you are. You speak on where you want to be, based on what you want, where you want to be, according to God's word. So, and Zechariah said unto the angel, Whereby shall I know this? For I am an old man, and my wife well speaking in years. So he is telling the angel that you got the wrong address, because I am an old Can you not see me? If you look at me, do, you, do I look like somebody that will have a child? That's what he was saying. Sometimes the word of the Lord comes to someone, you give them the word, and they look at you and say, Pastor, I don't, I, I, I hope so. I don't think, no, Pastor, you don't understand. What else do we have to understand? God's word comes to change the situation. You say, Pastor, you don't understand. What else must we understand? That's what Zacharias was doing. The word is coming to him. He was saying, you don't understand my situation. That's what he was saying. the angel answering so please pay attention i'll share with you this week that the angel had only one assignment go and deliver the word to him he was not given an assignment to do this one. Oh, you partner with me and the angel answering said unto him i am gabriel that stand in the presence of god so what he was saying was for you to doubt this word because i stand in god's presence something has happened to you Oh, you are not with me. Every time you doubt the word that is coming from the mouth of the Lord, something happens negatively. Especially if we stand on God's altar and we are declaring something positive and you doubt it, it is not a good thing. Are you that stand in the presence of God? So the angel is saying that not all the angels stand in God's presence, but for this angel standing before you, I stand in the counsel of God and I heard the matter concerning you. I, I didn't come on my own. I was sent to deliver this word. And I'm sent to speak unto thee and to show thee these glad tidings. Many believers are still at the same spot or are not growing because they don't know how first of all to be receive and then to speak the law of speaking. What I'm teaching you is the first law of the spirit. In the school of the spirit, if you are going to get anywhere, this is the first law, what you are saying. Hallelujah. You can be a very hard worker. Wake up at 3 a.m., go to work, do everything. If what you are saying is wrong, you are going nowhere. <laughs> because your mouth will destroy everything. Verse, and behold... This one, the angel is about to say, God didn't ask him to do it. But by reason of Zechariah's unbelief, this must happen. Behold, thou shalt be dumb and not be able to speak until the day that these things shall be performed. Because thou believest not my words, which shall be fulfilled in their season. So Zacharias was to, supposed to receive the message. The angel did not come to make him dumb, but because he did not believe in the first instance, the angel said you'll be dumb. And I was trying to explain to you throughout the week, the reason is this, please, please pay attention. If Zacharias was to leave the temple on that day, he would have destroyed this prophetic message with his mouth because he didn't have faith. People are not with me. He would have gone there. The people, the people were outside waiting for him. He would have gone there to say, 
listen, something is happening that I myself am confused. I saw a strange being that is saying I'm going to have a child. I don't believe it. That's what we would have told the people. He would have left the place with a wrong philosophy to confuse the people. So the angel said, this word, listen, oh church, are you following me? He said, this word has been perfected in the spirit and it must manifest. But because there is a law in the spirit, the law of what you are saying, we know you will have the tendency to go and speak something else to destroy this word. So you have to go down until this thing is performed. Oh, so the Bible said when they got to the wall of Jericho, Jericho, they said nobody should speak. Because the speaking is going to affect the atmosphere around Jericho. So everybody be quiet. Walk in faith. Until the day you hear the trumpet, then you shout. Because what you are saying is very important. Absolutely. Hallelujah. When they speak something to you and it's negative, don't say, you know, I was shy. Begin to refute it with everything in you. <laughs> Hallelujah. So when you hear us say, I cannot be sick. It is not a statement of pride. It's something that you must say and continue to say consciously until it enters your spirit. Because by your words, you will be condemned. And by your word, you will be justified. I cannot be sick. Amen. Even when you don't believe it in the first instance, keep saying it. Are you hearing me? So the angel said you will be dumb until the day this thing is performed. Oh, can I say this, church? It means there are people that when they receive a prophetic word, the next thing they must do is that they must cut themselves away from some people who don't have faith. Because as soon as you go and share with them, they will kill that prophetic word. Words have power to kill the words. To kill the, the, the prophetic word. Because the angel, oh, church, did the angel bring Zacharias a baby in the flesh? What did he bring him? Words. And Zacharias was going to use words to destroy it. So they said, let's keep this mouth sharp, shut. <laughs> Everything that is going to happen in our lives will first come through words, the power, the law of your speaking. So if you are saying the wrong thing, forget about laying hands on you. That's why some people will say, I've gone to church for 20 years, nothing is happening. Let us begin to investigate what you have been saying for 20 years. We will discover that the church is not the issue. It's your life. <laughs> what you are saying. Because the reason we come to church is to hear the word of God. So we will go back home and then speak them. But people only come to church as a club. Because they come to church and everywhere that is spoken, they close their notebook and then when they go home, they it aside some even don't come with notebooks in the first place because they think they don't need the word to be written down and they said that you know you know that even the most intelligent brain retains up to about 70 80 percent of whatever is said by the following day you lose more than 40 percent <laughs> so the best way to recall is to record so you keep looking at the same thing. The other day I brought to you my notes. I came to show you some of my notes that I've done over the years. I still take notes. When I'm reading my Bible and God speaks to me about something, I don't have any, I write it in the Bible. I don't want to forget. So you can visit it and say the same thing. Because thou believest not my words. Again, church, are you following up to this point? How did we know Zacharias did not believe? It was his word. Don't be, don't be moved by the way people dress and they appear nice. And they come and tell you, you know, I have faith. Just listen to them for two minutes. You will discover whether they really have faith. Hallelujah. There is nothing that is going to be done in this house by ourselves. It will have to be done by faith in God, by our speaking. So now when we say we are taking over Australia for, for the Lord, nobody should say this son is too big. It's a, it's a statement of pride. No, the law of speaking. If we cannot say it now, that law I said, this, this message is the, is the law of the spirit. The, that law actually states that anything your mouth cannot say, you are not permitted to have it.
anything your mouth cannot declare, you are not permitted to possess it. If it is too big for your mouth, why should it come to you then? Oh, church, you are not with me. If the thing is too big for your mouth to say it, why should it come to you? So when we say we, if we are not able to declare we are taking kundula for Jesus, kundula will not be given to us because it is too big for our mouth. It will not come to you. It's a law in the spirit. If this message enters our spirit and we begin to speak the right way, I'm telling you, we take over. Once in a while you should wake up. And when you wake up, all you are doing is that you are declaring around your house that this atmosphere, I am speaking words of life over this my house. There is no death in this house. It's a conscious thing. You are speaking. This place is a life zone. Life zone. Life zone. Consciously building that atmosphere. Because it's a law. By your words, you'll be justified. By your words, you'll be condemned. Can I tell you, church, many believers are being condemned every day. Not because Jesus wants to. He said the Bible says even on judgment day, they will still come back and account. But on a daily basis, a lot of people condemn themselves. Not Jesus. Not even the devil. By their own words. I cannot do this. As soon as you say you cannot, you have registered something in the spirit which is tagged on you. Lead opening prayer. Pastor, I can't do it. That statement should not come from you. Lead opening prayer. God will give me grace. I would lead. Oh. As soon as you say I can't, you are establishing something. Come and preach. Oh, pastor, you know, I've never, I was not born with a microphone. Neither is any preacher. <laughs> Come and preach. Pastor, I can't preach. You say that I have never preached before, but I know grace will carry me there. Hallelujah. I want to sound this message consciously because there are many big things. I told you that many, some people left our ministry, okay? You know why they left? They left because they felt what we are saying is, it doesn't make sense. And that they think, they think it is not practical. So in their mind, they will not learn anything because the message should be a practical message. I am not here. If there is something practical, it's the word of God. And the word says you must first speak. Amen. Are we together? I am not here to come and tell us, you know, if we save 10,000 every year, we are going to buy the building. If that is our plan, it's our own energy. But faith says that speak the word. <laughs> Hallelujah. Speak the word. So some people left because they thought, no, this is not, it's not common sense to them. I am not preaching common sense. We can read common sense from books. The word of God is bigger than common sense. Even though there is an application of common sense when we are exhibiting faith. Faith is not common sense. Are we together? Breaks everything that you know. Because it will not make sense. Anybody who walk into this building and say, why is the church saying they are buying this building? They should wait for another five years and then let more members come in. More members come in, raise more money. That is, that is we doing it in the flesh. Thinking that the numbers are going to account for the ability to buy the building. But faith says, you know, God said to me, we are buying the building now so that when the build auditorium is filled up, nobody will think it is because we had more members. Oh. Nobody will say because people came in. Now we can see because the tendency to begin to calculate. Oh, if we have 200 people and everybody is giving this, that means that God is out of the equation. Faith says it now. The building is bought. Oh, thank you, Jesus. The building is what? In Jesus' name. Now, God is able to save with much and with few. Same principle. So, after today, whenever you appear before God, make sure that there is faith inside. And what you are saying is in line with his word. Amen? Amen. Next scripture. Are you blessed? <laughs> so, Romans chapter 10. See, the book of Romans is one of the powerful books as well in the Bible. It's a highly philosophical book that was written to reason out our salvation. 
So in Romans 10, which is very popular for many of us, the Bible said, but the righteousness which is of faith, what does it do first? No, what does the righteousness of faith do? Faith do. Even the righteousness of faith does not keep quiet. It speaks. Oh. On this wise, so when we say you are righteous and you have faith, they are saying to you that that thing should come out of you. And you don't speak like this. Say not where? In thine heart. There are two places we speak. The first place is your heart. The mouth is only a channel to say what is first in your heart. Oh, we are going there. I started by emphasizing the speaking, but I want us to emphasize this so that we know where we stand on this matter. Amen? Amen. I discovered too many people speak like right now, if I say everybody should say I cannot die or I will not be sick, everybody will say it, but some people will not believe it in their heart. So they will only say it because the pastor said they should say it. Or the atmosphere they are in, everybody is saying it, so they must also say it. But their heart is far from that declaration. So Jesus said, out of the abundance of where? The mouth speaks. So our mouth is always going to speak what we have abundantly in our heart. So the Bible said, guard your heart with all diligence, for out of it flows the, uh, the issues of life. Proverbs 4. So what that means is that everyone must have the word of God hiding in their heart. So when you speak, you speak God's word. Are we together? Many people have the word of men hiding in their heart more than the word of God. And you cannot speak God's word if it is not there. Say not in your heart. So, you can deceive us by saying to us, you know, can get, you can come to the pastor and say nice things, but your heart will betray you. Say not in your heart. God is the one that sees the heart. First of all, he, he sees your heart. So, he said, say not in your heart, who shall ascend into heaven? That is to bring Christ down from above. In other words, they were saying that when it even comes to the words to speak, nobody should think that it is very difficult for me. Oh, pastor, you know it's very difficult. That's what they are trying to say. That the word is nigh you. And I'm going to show you how they said the word is nigh you and inside you. In the beginning was what? And the word was with, and the word became what? Uh, the, the word became flesh and dwelt among men, isn't it? Everyone that has received Jesus, who has, you have received that word that became flesh in you. So what they are saying is nobody should say, it is too difficult for me to say because I can't go to heaven and bring down Christ. The word is in you. Oh. Or who shall descend into the deep? That is to bring up Christ again from the dead. Is that all we, we had on this scripture? But what says it? The word is where? And where is the word? In thy mouth. So your heart must say what? Uh, your mouth must say what is in where? When we receive Jesus, where does he? Where, where is Jesus in relation to our physical lives? Where do we say he is? So if Jesus is truly in your heart, we should see it in your speaking. That is all I'm trying to say. <laughs> so if Jesus is in your heart, that word says that ye were healed by his stripes. How can somebody that has this word staying in their spirit say that, Pastor, I have cancer? How can Jesus be there? You have Jesus and you are still saying you have cancer. These are contradictory elements in you. One of them must, both of them cannot be present at the same time. One of them must leave. Yeah, exactly. Oh. So the more you are confessing I have cancer, you are only telling Jesus you don't have a place here. Because what you are having is what you are declaring. Because the Bible said Christ in you, what happens? The hope of glory. So Christ is in me. And if, I, if I, he is in me and I'm full, Christ is in me. There is no room for anything else to come around my life because already my life is full. 
Oh, the fullness is in, is in my spirit. So I'm full. The law of speaking. The law of speaking. The law of speaking. Hallelujah. Church is changing, isn't it? When we come around, we, we, I want us to be conscious. So people will come into our midst and they will realize that this, this church, they speak differently. Amen. 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 We speak differently. We don't speak based on what we know. You know, yesterday I was talking to some, some pastors and some of them were not exhibiting faith, you know. Because we do too much calculation. Listen, I am not sharing this message for people to go and say, because pastor said we have faith, we don't plan our lives. And no, that's not what I'm saying. Are we together? You know, some people hear the message and say, if that is so, why should we plan that? I should just be speaking. I don't have to plan. No. This message is bringing your mind to a consciousness that you need the word, the speaking of, your, of what, the things you are saying has so much to do with where you are going. You can be planning and be speaking the wrong thing. That's what I'm saying. You can be planning, putting things down. But yeah, what you are saying is different from what you are planning. So you are not going anywhere. So the emphasis is that regardless of whatever you are doing, there must be a speaking going on and that you must speak the right thing. Are we together? <laughs> Somebody was saying that, you know, because of the way the world is now, when you are traveling, you must have your medication with you because you can, I mean, different weather's different things. Now, that sounds very noble, isn't it? It sounds very kind and very good but the point is the place we are going is God over there no 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 wait is God over where you are going you see there and is God here if God is here and he's protecting you why are you afraid that where you are going he can't protect you there oh. <laughs> it means <laughs> if we go on this analysis it means the God in that place is weaker than the God that is here are we together so is the pastor saying that if people are on medication, they should leave it? No. All I'm trying to point your attention to is this. When you are, you are traveling, your first consciousness is that God, you are here and you are there everywhere. So my first consciousness is that I am still under this atmosphere. The condition in that country, regardless, I'm safe. Oh. Are we together? It's a consciousness. And you are saying this, this consciously. You are not... See... Don't wait that one day you will get up and everything will be fine. Church, I'm saying to you, Mama, don't wait that one day you wake up and everything will be fine at home. It is what you are saying. You are consciously declaring. Nobody should wish that one day they wake up and everything is fine and they don't have to do anything. I'm telling you, I will say it again and again and again. There is nothing that is going to happen if you are not speaking. It is a law. So as you are seeing your children do the wrong thing, you begin to consciously speak over them the right thing. So you start calling them the name you want them to be. If you want your child to be a pilot, you can start calling them. God who calls those things we, which be not as if what? As if they were. He calls those things which are not as if they were. So for your child to be a pilot, it is not first in the classroom. It is in what you are saying over them. The law of speaking. Are we together? It is not too late to go back and start speaking. You write down the names of your children. This my child will be a preacher. This my child will be a doctor. This my child will be this. And you are conscious, saying it consistently. You are registering something in the spirit. Because by your words, you will be justified. So when the angels come around, they will look at the words you are saying and say, this man is justified. How do we know? He has consistently said the same thing about this child. This child must be a doctor. Oh. This child must be saved. Why? Because the father has been praying and has been speaking. This, my child, is for you, Lord. And the record is there. Can you see it? By your words, how? You are being justified by the speaking. Are you hearing me? <laughs> the word is 90, even in thy mouth. And where? In thy heart. That is the word of faith which we preach like I'm doing this morning hallelujah 
Thank you, Jesus. Don't worry about all these things that are happening in our church. Just focus on where you are going. Because if we can get our mouth to be speaking the right thing based on God's word, I'm telling you, one person is enough to take over the whole of Australia. <laughs> one person is enough. An army is right. I sense the anointing right now. An army is rising up. Listen, this message, if people can change the way they are speaking after this message, that is 95% of the job done. So they tell you that this thing is not possible and you are convicted in your spirit that it's possible. You tell them that according to what I know, everything is possible for with God nothing shall be impossible so that is the statement for with God if you take God out there you can talk about impossibilities but if he's in there everything is possible hallelujah thank you Jesus so some people look at me and they, in all humility they think that this guy doesn't know what he's talking about you know, we started ministry. Some people thought, Why are you saying you are going to buy a building when we came here? Some people thought it doesn't make sense. It doesn't make monetary sense for, in quotation commas, a small congregation to rent a building that they are paying four and a half thousand dollars a month. Monetary sense. Is, does it make sense? So some people thought we were mad. How can you do it? So people said, No, you have to stay in a place and save more money if we go with that mentality what we are doing is that we are not trusting God for provision in the first instance we are using our own money but since we have been here by the grace of God one year counting God has been faithful are you hearing me Amen. because we are learning to speak the same thing that we know we are not speaking what we are seeing <laughs> That if thou shalt confess with what? Church, our mouth has been an instrument that has declared things. Some people have declared the wrong things for many years. Even something as powerful as Jesus coming into our hearts. Nobody needed to climb a ladder to heaven. What did we do? We confess with our mouth. Can we imagine? A okay. If Jesus in all his glory is going to live in your heart and the way jesus will come into your heart is by your speaking can we imagine what else we can do with our speaking Amen. oh you people are not getting a revelation if you can invite jesus into your heart by your speaking what else can you not achieve by your speaking can i say it again oh church you people are not with me are you are, am i confusing you Am I, have we lost anyone out of the flight? If you are still here, let me know. Because we are now on cloud, um, so cloud nine, eh? Yeah. 40,000 feet above sea level. If you are still on the flight, let me know. Let me see your hand. Okay, we haven't lost anyone. Yeah, you are there. Are we together? If something as powerful as Jesus coming into your heart, you didn't have to go and write exam, but it was your mouth and your heart. Oh, church. It means we have denied ourselves many things by not speaking. <laughs> what that scripture means is that forever, anybody that will invite Jesus into their heart, they can't do it in any way. They can't even be said they came to lay on the altar. No, they must say it and they must believe it. Forever. That if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus, not only that and what believe where in your heart so i made that emphasis that not only what you are saying but what you believe you can say what you don't believe you know that people say what they don't believe and that is why it doesn't manifest if you say what you don't believe it will not manifest so the emphasis is on believing so you can speak Every time, listen, every time Jesus spoke to the people about speaking, you will see he will talk about belief first. In the heart that, that God raised him from the dead, what will happen? 
If you can confess this, what will happen? So the way for anybody to lose their salvation is simple. If they go back and say, I do not believe that Jesus Christ came from the dead. They have, that, okay. Is that not the manner in which we, we got saved? So if they go back and say, that thing I said I believe, I don't believe it anymore. They've lost their salvation. It's simple. Because the, the very foundation of your faith or your salvation is that you confessed and you believed. If you go back and say, I don't believe it anymore, what is the basis of the salvation then? Can you see what I'm seeing? So when a man is saved, they remain saved so long as this condition is fulfilled. For what happens? For with the heart... <laughs> It means when it comes to the matter of believing, and I've taught you in this house that there is a difference between belief and faith, right? I said belief is only a matter of the heart, but faith is first belief and what? So is it only Uncle Basilio who has been taking notes? Hey, we, we, let me, please find me my rod. <laughs> we are in a class now. Faith it's more than belief, okay? Many times we use both interchangeably, it's fine. But when you look at those two words, belief is a matter of the heart. Are we together? So they did not say, for with the heart, man faith unto salvation. It's a man believe, because belief is always in the heart. Believes unto righteousness. And with what? Confession is made unto salvation. It means if you believe Jesus Christ is the Son of God and you don't say it, you are still not saved. Oh, it is not enough to believe. I told you that demons are also believers. Do you know demons are believers? They know the truth, they are believers. So, the, the difference between we and demons is that we are not just believers, we are faith talkers. That's why the Bible said three things shall remain faith, hope, and love. And the Bible said without faith, not without belief. The Bible did not say without belief, it is impossible to please God. It said without faith. Because faith involves believing, confessing, and action. So don't stay at believing. Speak, because that is faith. And then there is a corresponding action. Hallelujah. This is our last but one scripture. Mark 11, verse 23. Everyone, please pay attention. It's a very... Important scripture we quote every time. But the Lord Jesus spoke to Papa Kenneth Hagin of blessed memory on this scripture. And he changed his life on many things. For verily, Jesus came to him and said, read this scripture. Meditate on this scripture and tell me what you see. How many of us have heard the name of Papa Kenneth Hagin before? Man of faith. Jesus came to him with this scripture and said, look at this scripture and tell me what you see. <laughs> and this morning, I'm, I'm also coming to us with this scripture. Every one of us, we are going to pay attention to this. For verily, I say unto you. So let's leave that part, okay? This, the first part is Jesus saying, isn't it? That whosoever, wait, only pastors, Anyone, everyone. <laughs> so, that whosoever shall say, mountains literally stand for obstacles, isn't it? Challenges. That whosoever shall what? Number one, say unto this mountain. And I think I've taught on this one a lot. That the mountain must not be something figurative. It's something you must first identify. If you see that your children are becoming wayward, you must first see it as a mountain before you speak to it. Oh. If it is not seen as a mountain, you can't speak to it. So if your child is becoming wayward, don't only be strict. You must go on your knees and say, this mountain of waywardness, I confront it by the power in the name of Jesus. Are we together? He said, whosoever shall say unto this mountain, not any mountain, the mountain that you can see. Are we together? So if your eyes have not been opened to see that this is a mountain, you will just be walking around it. 
and you just be thinking that oh these are just normal challenges i can handle but as soon as your eyes are open to see it is a mountain of the spirit you don't tackle it in the flesh you tackle it in the spirit so he said whosoever shall say unto this mountain be thou removed and be thou cast into the sea and shall not do what oh can you see the heart over there <laughs> But shall believe that those things which he says, can you see say again there? Yes. Shall come to pass. He shall have another thing else. Another thing else. In one verse, we can see believe once, but say three times. Oh. It means believe is once, but saying is continuous. Oh, you are not with me. Believing is once, but saying is a constant thing. In one verse, you believe, but you say it three times in one verse. So when I believe that I cannot be poor, that belief is there, but I must constantly declare it. <laughs> Hallelujah. You don't change your confession because something happened. Don't change your confession. Because your confession is first not based on what you are seeing. It's based on your belief. So if nothing has happened to your belief, regardless of the circumstance your eyes see, your confession must not change. Are we together? If this part of the message enters your spirit, we have finished the service. We can pray. Believe. And then say. He said, he shall have whatsoever. So everything that we have now is what we have said or we did not say or what we said wrongly <laughs> so can we boldly proclaim that kundula is for the lord Amen. now can we say it so don't just say it. first believe is it possible that god would god would give us this land so that his name will be glorified in this vicinity listen if we cannot take this territory forget about australia because the gospel was first to be preached in judea take judea first before you go to jerusalem then you go to samaria so this environment must first be affected by the power of the lord before we are talking about australia and what we are doing every day is a conscious civilization of the spirit of god over this atmosphere this is why i keep saying the more people are dropping out the more we are delaying the divine program if we get 10 people that will stay committed say pastor every sunday regardless of whatever message i'm part of this civilization whether we came to worship we came to pray we came to sing whatever we we are consciously that's why this morning i was telling you about the conscious culture we are building in this place Amen. we are not just doing church to add to the numbers and we're also not just here to form a club so the club is a spiritual thing we are doing some people will not like the way we preach because the message is not to make you comfortable it is to march us forward it is to make you take territories for the lord Amen. hallelujah take families for the lord <laughs> what you are saying you are no different from what you are saying hallelujah Amen. so don't let anybody be deceived by thinking that oh you know when i say this i'll go and correct it you are who you are saying okay I will ask us a question. Do, or let me, not, it's not a question. I want to tell you something. God's integrity is based on his words. God, his integrity is based on the word of God. That's it. The speakings of God. Do you know why Jesus came? Jesus' coming was not only to bring salvation to us. Jesus' coming was to come and confirm the word God spoke. Otherwise, the words God spoke, if they had not been manifested in Jesus, it would be a lie. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. The atmosphere is changing, isn't it? Amen. We are about to pray. Listen, after all that you have heard, when you start... When you start speaking or praying, okay, 
when oh church are you here so now somebody will be asking me how do we do the speaking i'm going to show you you know the reason why we pray for long praying long i think i taught this message manifestation ministration operation the reason why we pray for long is this in prayer you develop the ability to speak exactly what god wants you to say I'll say it again. I think that one, it didn't, it didn't really go. So somebody will say, but pastor, if that is the case, okay. The reason why many people speak and it lacks power is because there is no support in the spirit on that word. So all I'm trying to say is, if we pray in the spirit for one hour, okay, in this place, and then we say that this person is healed, it is done. Are we together? Yes. But there must be a witness in the spirit what is that witness the prayer base that supports what you are speaking it cannot be compared to 24 hours of prayer that is why any church that is not praying we can speak much but nothing gets done <laughs> can you see where we are rounding up now proverbs 18 verse 20 a man's belly shall be satisfied with what the words with with the food that he, he buys <laughs> oh. so what brings satisfaction to your belly is not the food you are eating with the fruit of his mouth and with the increase of his lips shall he be filled Are you blessed? I will give us one or two more scriptures and then we start praying. Because we'll pray for a while. And at this atmosphere, don't look at me and say, and still be that I told you at the beginning that the Bible said, let us approach the throne of grace with boldness. Give me James chapter 3. Let's read verses 4, 5, and 6. James chapter 3, verses 4, 5, and 6. Then after that, we'll start praying. Hallelujah. I'm blessed myself. The message is speaking to me also. James chapter 3, verses 4. Yes, behold, also the ships, which though they be so great and are driven of fierce winds, yet are they turned about with a very small helm, <laughs> whithersoever the governor listed. So there's when you see a ship, as mighty and big as it is, it is a very small device that controls the ship. You, you don't see it. When you, what you see is just the, the luxury of all those ships. Amen? I think we should, go and, we should go on one of those ships for three months and do evangelism. We know the people on the ship. We'll do a retreat on the ship. Amen? Yeah. Hallelujah. We will just join them. They said they are going on a cuisine. And then when we join them, for the first three days, we are fasting. Before we finish, everybody will come. They will say they are not eating again. They want to fast with us. Hallelujah. By the time we get to our destination, revival breaks out. Amen. Amen? We call that one Jesus cuisine. <laughs> oh, thank you, Lord. Can you see what I'm seeing? They said in verse 4 that the ship is great, but yet it's controlled by a very small thing. A very small thing. Verse 5. <clears throat> Even so, the tongue is a little member. <laughs> And boasted great things. Behold, how great a matter a little fire kindled. So, if you see fire in any place, it was not fire that was ablaze in the first instant. It was something small. So, this tongue that is in our lips, that many people have used wrongly. All that people have done with their lips is that they have only gossiped about people. The reason for their mouth is gossip. The reason for their mouth is speaking negative things. So the Bible was saying that no matter how big you are and how we see you, the direction of your life is dependent on what you are saying with your mouth. Hallelujah. And the tongue is a fire. <laughs> a world of iniquity. So is the tongue among our members that it defiles the whole body so men are defiling their whole body how by their sayings by their sayings
May God give us understanding. That's why I told you it's not everything you must speak about. There are some things, let it go. Because you can defile your whole body and set on fire the course of nature. And it is set on fire of hell. Hallelujah. The law of speaking. It is a law. You must know what to speak. What to declare. Your heart must back what you are saying. If you cannot say it, you are not permitted to have it. If you cannot say it, never forget that. If it is too big for your mouth to say, it will be too big for you to possess. You know why we can't say some things? Because we have not come to believe it first of all. So, Zachariah, do you remember Zachariah we just talked about? Look one. Zachariah could not say it because he didn't believe it. How do we know a man is speaking the right thing or a man believes? It is by what he's saying. Are we together? How do we know you believe you are a believer? It is not what you tell us that, oh, I'm a believer. It is the regular saying. So if we can listen to you for five minutes, we will know whether you are truly a believer. Or you have just joined the, 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 the fold of people that are called Christians and you are hiding in there. We don't know you yet. We will know you by a close encounter. Over the years, there were people that I met, you know, I thought that they were very, very mature. They knew things until you started getting closer. You engaged and you realize they don't even have, they don't know what faith is. Because there is a difference between what you know in your head and what you know in your spirit, in your heart. Head leads to pride. Heart leads to humility and submission. Too many people have head knowledge about the things, so they can't say it. The Bible did not say you should know it in your head. It said you should believe it in your heart. There are doctors that know that smoking is no good, but they themselves, they smoke. It, it means they know it in their head, but the thing is not in their heart. The Bible said it must first be in your heart, then you speak it. Not the head. Last scripture, 1 Peter 4 verse 11, and then everybody will start praying. 1 Peter 4 verse 11. 1 Peter 4 verse 11. Are you blessed? Are you blessed? Do you want to pray and speak this morning? So they are giving us a condition now, after all that we have heard. If any man wants to speak, look at how you should speak. Let him speak the things his eyes are seeing. I thank God that he didn't say if the pastor wants to speak. He said, if any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. It means wherever you find yourself, you must speak that the people there, if, if they don't know God, they should be able to see and say, this is a representative of God by your speaking. We can't go to work and what the people are saying, we say the same thing. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God. <laughs> Are we going to speak this morning? Yeah. Are we going to speak? I think it's only three. The people here, maybe I'll stay here. Some of these people, they are looking at me some way, but it's fine. I can stay here as well. <laughs> Are we together? Yes. Are we ready to speak? Yes. The law of speaking. The law of speaking. If any man speak, let him speak as the oracles of God from his word. Do you know this scripture actually means that if you are not going to speak as the oracle of God, don't speak. That's why I said it's not every matter you must speak on. If any man speak, let him speak as an oracle. If any man minister, let him do it as of the ability which God gives, that God in all things may be glorified through Jesus Christ, to whom be praise, dominion forever and ever. Amen. One day, I will teach us the difference between when you read the Bible and you see forever, 
and then you see forever and ever, and then you see forever and ever and ever. Those are not the same. <laughs> Can you see they have written forever twice? The, the word ever is there twice. Now it is different from forever and ever and ever. <laughs> oh, you people know it to me. And it's also different from the word forever. One day I'll teach you the difference when we grow small. Hallelujah. Are you with me? Yes. The Bible doesn't make mistakes with the words that have been written forever and ever. So that's why when we share the grace, when we get to the last part, we keep repeating the forever and ever. It's, it, is, it is conscious, deliberate. Those of you say it only once and they just say, but we finish saying it. <laughs> Some of us, we know what we are doing. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, we can say forever like 50 times because we are not saying the forever out of the blue. There's a confession which has been made and we are making that forever to support that confession. Are we together? It was not just something we, like I, I, I didn't just come here and I started saying forever, forever, forever. No. I made a confession and then I'm saying forever and ever. So it is in support of that confession. Rise up to your feet. In the name of Jesus. Please, in this morning service, I want everybody to speak. Hallelujah. This message we have heard, you can still be quiet and be gentle. I told you I've created a new word this morning. Let the web staff people take it. Eh? Do you remember the word? Gentility, yeah, Madam Nicolette. Please send it to web staff for me that they should add it to the dictionary. Speak. Hallelujah. If you are standing by somebody that you are not very comfortable, they will hear what you are speaking. Run to another place. At least, now let's enjoy the space. There's, they see that place is there. Speak. And I want less distraction. Because what we are declaring is still generating an energy. It's going to generate an energy. When you leave this place and you are speaking, you are conscious. Are we together? I want all of us to pray in the spirit for the next 5, 10, 15 minutes. Consciously, in the name of Jesus. If you don't pray in tongues, just keep thanking the Lord. In the name of Jesus. I want every voice to be heard loud and on high this morning. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. Lift up your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice and pray. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your voice. Le kapados ki vrihanda la basata in the name of Jesus, ma kapadeska valata, le kapadoska valata, in Jesus name, me se filibata, la kapadoski brihanda, le kapadaska valata, in Jesus name, me shabarata, la bazuri aparata, le kapadat, rapadoski brihanda balasata, in the mighty name of Jesus, ma sabalata, le kapadoska valata, in the name of Jesus, ma sarando rabasata, ha le kapadoski valata, ragapadeska balata, in the mighty name of Jesus in the mighty name of Jesus everybody pray speak in the spirit pray declare don't be silent ma duri biata le kapadas kavalata e paduri basataya ragapadoski balata e kapanda balasha rapadoski brihan le kapadoski valata in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name in Jesus mighty name kata valataya ragapados kavalata adosi venetaya le kapa Doska Valata, Pada Valataya, Rakapades, Le Padore Basata, Akapalataya, Ragapadoska Valata, Eshabran, Rakapadoska Valata. In the name of Jesus, Masarabata, Le Kapadoska Valata, E Padola Masata, Le Cabranda Balasata, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, in Jesus' mighty name, Le Kapadaska Valata, Padoski Vrihanda, Le Kapada, Rakapadoska Valata, Pasha Velataya, Le Kapadaska Valata, in Tabalasaya, Ragapadoska Valata, in the mighty name of Jesus, Madi Balata, Le Kapadoska Valata, He Sabalataya, Ragapadoska Valata, Pasha Valataya, Le Kapadoska Valata, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name, Madoni Miatal, Le Kapadoska Valata, Ragapadoska Valata. 
in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Masidi Bataya, Reka Padoska Valata, Padoski Valataya, Reka Padoska Valata, Anda Balasaya, Reka Padoska Valata, Payanda Balasaya, Leka Padoska Valata, Eka Palataya, Raka Padoska Valata, Padnos Venataya, Reka Padoska Valata, Eka Pataya, Raga Padoska Valata, Ados Venataya, Reka Padoska Valata, Pasha Valataya, Raka Padoska. Valata, Masana Mataya, Re Capadosca Valata, Ayata Balasaya, Re Capadosca Valata, Payanda Balasa, La Capadea, Re Capadosca Valata, in Jesus' mighty name, He Capalataya, Ra Capadosca Valata. Masena Bataya, Le Capadosca Falata, Ambasuri Biata, Le Capadosca Falata, Ra Capatea, La Fata Balasata, Aya Capata, Re Capadosca Falata, in the name of Jesus, 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 Masa Balataya, Ra Capadosca Falata, in the mighty name of Jesus, in the mighty name of Jesus, Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Give us Mark 11 verse 23 again. We are all going to speak. Hallelujah. To some mountains. Some mountains. When you find a mountain, you don't climb it. The Bible said you speak to it. Church, I wish everybody would pray consciously. Such a message does not come just for not. For verily I say unto you that whosoever they did not put a qualification on the whosoever that the person must be five years a Christian. They didn't say, they said whosoever shall say unto this mountain. Do you know what Jesus was saying? Jesus was saying that that mountain he was referring to at that moment, if they brought a new convert like Zamora in the flesh, in the spirit and came and spoke to that mountain and believed that mountain will be lifted that's what he was saying he was not saying that you must be 25 years a christian before you speak to this mountain every one of us you are going to pray consciously if there is a mountain the bible said you shall speak unto it and you believe in your heart what you are saying you shall have whatsoever you say hallelujah is there something that somebody is declaring to have or somebody is wishing to have if there is something you are wishing to have just lift up your hand if there is nothing that you want to see it's fine it's okay we are in the house of god there's no need to put up your hand if if you don't have anything amen but i have many things i'm declaring listen the law of the spirit is that you must first say it with your mouth hallelujah The, our next marriage seminar that we will have, I will teach the women that the way to sustain their homes is for them not to speak back for the next one year in their home. It, it, is, it is something that kills every argument and you see that there will be peace. Oh, if you are not loving me at all. It is, it is a nice way to keep the, I'm telling you. <laughs> Hallelujah. I want everyone to pray consciously please don't be distracted i want you to speak in the name of jesus because the atmosphere is open if you don't say anything nothing is done brother lua pray speak okay speak speak something whosoever i want you to see that whosoever i saw you know that you don't tell yourself i don't qualify the whosoever there they did not put a qualification to it amen whosoever whosoever regardless of age race height status or status or status however you say it <laughs> regardless of that the bible says, when you shall say i want you to lift up your voice begin to speak unto those things those mountains if there is no mountain but you are desiring to have something speak it right now in the name of jesus and you shall have it according to the word of the lord if you don't doubt it in your spirit if you do not doubt it in your spirit you will have it in the name of jesus lift up your voice and pray lift up your